Hey, my name is Shannon. I run a company called Stack of Stones, and I wanted to do a quick training on how to essentially demobilize your brain after the season, right? This has been a super intense season. Depending on where you work and what you're doing, there's a good chance you're getting ready for it to end and head home. And that process is a lot harder than we actually plan for, right? You have systems for everything else. You, you have a process for you, how you come down off of active duty. But we don't necessarily have a process in place for how we take your central nervous system, which has been super activated and stressed and strained for the entire season, and we bring it back down to the off season. That's not magic. It doesn't just happen quickly. We have to actually have a process for it, okay? So super basic process that we're going to follow is first we're going to kind of take a moment to assess the season, lay out a, essentially a map of it so that you can kind of remember what happened. I'm guessing it's been a little bit intense probably one big smoke, smoky blur. So what we want to do is we want to give you some milestones. I'm going to walk you through that process. Next, we're going to be honest about the impact of that season. As we walk through all the different things that have happened over the past several months, many, many months, we want to make sure we're honest about how that impacted us because then we can make a plan for how to take care of ourselves. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Um, as far as actually using this training, I want you to plan for about an hour. The recording will not be that long, but there's several moments where I need you to kind of pause and map out what you're doing. So give yourself that time. Be as free from distractions as you, as you can. Like this isn't a good time if you're trying to keep an eye on the kids or you're watching a game on another screen or something. Give yourself the time and attention that this needs. And I would love you to have a pen and some paper with you. Okay. Okay. Let's dive in. So the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of timeline out your season. Like I said, it can get really blurry at the end of it. And what happens is sometimes we forget some of the moments that have had a big impact on us because it's just a big blur. So what I want you to do is I want you to draw a line on your piece of paper. And then I want you to put some kind of mile markers or some structure in it. So for me, I'm, I'm, I understand wildland, but I'm not wildland. So I would do mine with months and weeks, right? Because that's kind of how my life is structured. If that works for you, do it that way, right? So kind of mark out the different months and the different weeks. Depending on you and your role, um, you may want to mark out the various roles you've been on. You may want to mark out by assignment, by location. Whatever makes sense to you, do it. There's no wrong way. We just want some structure, okay? And then within that, I want you to mark out details about each segment, right? So for each role, as much as you can remember, mark out which fire you were on, which location you were on. If you're in a position that's not with the same crew the whole season, then who were you with, right? Whatever details make sense to you, you're kind of filling in the color about the different moments of your season. And if you need, I want you to stop and um, pause after each of these if you need to. Okay, and then next, let's go through and mark in what I'm going to call the big stuff, okay? Big moments that happen in the season, and I'll list out a couple of different types. If I missed something, but it was a big moment for you, okay. One of the things I want you to consider through the rest of this training is you are an individual. Whatever experience you had is valid and real and normal for you, okay? So if something happened during the season that didn't seem to impact anyone else, but it really messed with you, okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with you. Okay, so I'm going to give you ideas. If you have stuff that you want to put in outside of these ideas, go for it. Okay, so the first thing I want you to put in is losses, right? So we did lose some lives. Um, this may be losses in terms of maybe you're on structure protection and you, you didn't win the battle, right? So maybe you had to sit and watch, watch a structure burn, someone's home burn. We lost some entire towns, so maybe you were near that. I know that depending on where you live, maybe the losses were your neighbor's homes or maybe your own home, right? That's one of the things that's been really intense is a lot of times you're out there fighting fire and this fire is not some stranger's yard. This is your neighbor's yard, okay? So anything like that that was a major source of loss. Um, I also want you to think about loss in terms of just beautiful locations, right? So if you used to know that this was a great place to get out and go do some fishing and you come around the corner and it's just devastated. That's a source of loss, okay? Um, other big stuff would be close calls, right? So anything that made your sphincter clench, okay? If you got close to a burnover, you were a little bit too close to that tree that came down. Um, any of those moments that would cause a, cause a um, fear response, I want you to mark them down, okay? Even if you laughed it off. So here's the thing. I'm going to come after this a couple times in this training. As a culture, 
in wildland, there's a tendency to be like, oh, that was fucked up and get back to work, right? Okay, that's fine. But whatever it was that made you do that, oh, that's important. And I want you to acknowledge that if there was fear in it, that had a chemical reaction in your body. And we've got to acknowledge that and deal with it. Okay, so go through, mark any close calls, anything that was scary, anything that was overwhelming. And then I also want you to go back and mark down any personal stuff. So were there any birthdays you missed? Did your baby say their first word and you weren't there? Um, were there really great moments of like you went home on a great R&R &R and had a really great camping trip, right? This can be good stuff that you put into. I want you to just kind of, you're building yourself a bit of a timeline so that we can map out the emotional impact of everything that you've gone through. Okay, anything big like that. Okay, and then one thing I want to layer in is anywhere you felt levels of like disrespect. So this can look a couple of different ways. One, I know we started off the season with a bang with our lovely elected official calling wildland firefighters unskilled labor. That was great. Super disrespectful. And as you're going into a stressful season, you may have felt that. It, that may have been a really frustrating thing for you to hear. Okay. Disrespect can also be feeling like you don't have the resources you need. Some of these fires were just giant and you simply, you didn't stand a chance. That can feel disrespectful or like you're abandoned, okay? So mark down moments where you noted that. And then also I know that on some of the fires, you were just not resourced appropriately in terms of the food you got or having enough toilets. So if you were on one of these fires where you busted your ass all day, like a Smucker's Uncrustable, I'm very sorry. That's crap. It shouldn't have happened. And it probably resulted in some feelings of being disrespected. So I want you to mark those down, okay? And it's not like you have to be like, on Tuesday, August 9th, I got an Uncrustable and I was mad. It doesn't have to be that specific, but when we look back over the landscape, kind of this map of your season, that disrespect actually leaves a mark on us and we wanna make sure we acknowledge and then kind of tend to that, okay? And then finally, anything interpersonal, right? So were there any moments of conflict, any struggles you had maybe with leadership, um, if you are leadership, any struggles you had with those under your command, um, any struggles within your crew, this can also be within your personal life, like how are you doing with your spouse or your partner, were, were, were there points of tension, were there points of tension with the community, okay, so again, going back to the idea that some of this is really close to home, and maybe there is disagreement, there's tension, I know there's some people who don't want to leave their houses, they may be yelling at you, again, going back to disrespect, okay, Anything where that really rose, it's, these are weights that you carried. And we, when we want to kind of look at how you're doing at the end of the season, if you've carried these weights of disrespect or conflict or tension, we want to make sure that we know it happened. Okay? If you need to pause, go back and layer everything in, I want you to have a really complete map before we move on to the next part. Okay, so in this next section, what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment to be really honest about the impact of everything you've been through. I will warn you, we're going to talk a little bit about feelings here. And I regularly have people tell me that they only have two feelings, hungry and angry. If that's you, okay. But we're going to need a couple more. The reality is many of us were not taught how to explain what we've been through. So we just shove it down and keep going, which tends to work for a while. But what I've seen is that if someone doesn't have the ability to explain what has happened, both to make sense of it for themselves, but also to communicate with the people that care about them, they tend to go one of two ways. One, they get pretty disconnected and shut off, right? So if you're having trouble just really even talking to or connecting to the people in your life, some of that may be because you can't make sense of what's going on, so you just shut down, you get more and more distant and separate. The people around you may be telling that they're noticing this in you, okay? Or alternately, we tend to get angry, okay? So if we don't acknowledge everything we go through, which is a wide range of emotional experiences, it tends to all just come out as anger. Right, and this may just be like snappiness, right? You're snappy with the kids, you're snappy with traffic, you're snappy with your coworkers, or it may be like raging fury a lot of the time. So if you just feel constantly on edge, unfortunately, one of the ways we fix that is we gotta talk about the things we've experienced and the feelings they brought up, okay? So this is your chance to do it. So we're gonna do a couple, we're, I'm gonna give you a couple different tools. First, I'm gonna put up on the screen just a bunch of colors. So if you grew up in a family where feelings were not discussed, you now work in wildland where feelings are not discussed, you, you just don't have tools for it. That's not a failure, it's not a weakness, it just means you haven't been taught. When that's the case, sometimes we have a hard time applying vocabulary to an experience 
and we can actually use color. Color helps to kind of engage our brain in a way that we're not quite able to do with vocabulary. So if that's the case, let's use some colors. And what you do is I have these colors on the screen. I want you to look at them, look at the map of what you've been through in this season, and just think about which colors apply to which experiences. The other thing that's nice about color is no experience has only one emotion. It's not like something is pure happy or pure sad. It's generally a mix. And so color can help you kind of layer in some different emotions, again, without having to get that vocabulary part of your brain online. Um, and it would actually, if you have access to grants that you steal from your kids or markers or whatever, it's, it may be good to actually color in some of the experiences within your map. Okay, so that's one tool. The other thing we're gonna do is just going back to this idea of we need to have language for what we experience. So we're just gonna work on expanding your vocabulary, okay? Our emotional experiences are often really complicated and they overlap, like I just said. So the more words we have for it, the more we can make sense of what we went through. Like I said, the most common emotional experience that people in Wildland and then with my entire client base experience is anger. So at Stack of Stones, we are all about taking care of guardians. So I use guardian to be kind of a wraparound term for anyone who's first responder, healthcare worker, social services. Wildland definitely fits in there. Wildland is a little different than the others, which is why I'm doing a training specifically for you. But across all these roles, there's some consistent themes. And one of them is just suck it up and get the work done. We don't talk about feelings. And if you do have a feeling, it better be anger because that's the only safe one. Okay. So you're probably more familiar with anger. It feels it feels safer for you to express. So I'm gonna start there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some other words that are potentially underneath that sense of anger. So anger is a secondary emotion, meaning that it's what comes out of us. But often there's something a bit more like vulnerable underneath, something like sadness or grief. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start digging down different words. If they apply to one of the, the points on your map, just jot them down on there. You're just helping yourself understand what you've been through. Okay, so under angry, there may be a sense of hopelessness or helplessness. This can be absolutely infuriating when we feel like there is nothing we can do. This is increasingly becoming true as this fire behavior gets more intense, as these fires get bigger. If you're on structure protection, you know there's no way you're stopping this wall of fire and you feel furious, that makes sense. And underneath of the anger is probably some hopelessness or helplessness, okay? It's just gonna come out of anger. Likewise, frustration, right? Frustration and anger are similar, but if you just feel like you can't get your goals met, you can't do what you would like to do, maybe you're frustrated by the way a fire is being managed, something like that, be, I want you to notice that. And if you felt frustrated throughout a lot of the season, that's an important thing to note because it's going to take you a little bit to shake that off. Disrespected, abandoned, and rejected often also come out as anger. So remember how I had you map out moments where you did not receive what you needed? You probably felt angry, right? Smucker's uncrustable, rage. Yeah, but underneath the rage is the sense of being disrespected. Also, there's an idea of being abandoned, right? This is the agency that's supposed to take care of you and they're sending you uncrustable, okay? Likewise, this can apply to our relationships, right? So if you feel like, you are just not able to connect with your spouse. You may be feeling a little bit of rejection or abandonment there. It may be presenting as anger, but what we have to do is we have to be honest about the sense of, of rejection and abandonment because that's the real, that's the real thing, okay? Anger is the smoke, abandonment's the fire, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna pop over to sad. Sad and angry often get really kind of intertwined and connected. So let's take a moment and just acknowledge the grief of the work that you do. So underneath this, this base word of sad, you may feel lonely, right? Depending, a lot of times if you're with a consistent crew, you actually feel really connected and tight with that crew. We're gonna talk about that in a second. In other roles, if you bounce around and if you're away from your support system, your family, your friends, the people you love, there may be some loneliness, okay? If so, acknowledge that it was there, it's okay, right? That doesn't feel like a big, strong emotion, but it is incredibly powerful. And along with loneliness is disconnected. You may not feel lonely, but you may feel disconnected, okay? Same thing, you just don't know how to really relate to the people around you. This can happen a lot if you're in leadership, right? So it's really easy to be one of, one of the crew 
when you're one of the crew, but as soon as you're in charge, all of a sudden things change and you may feel a little disconnected. Okay, so let's talk for a second about grief. There is a ton of grief in Wildland and we don't, we don't necessarily acknowledge it. So then there's these deep feelings of sadness that again often present as frustration or anger. Okay, so basic thing around grief and loss they go together and the loss is, I want you to think about it when your funny bone gets hit, okay? The loss is the impact. The grief is the feeling that goes up your arm after you hit your funny bone, okay? So I'm gonna go through some of the losses that you encounter in Wildland. And then the grief is kind of the impact of that. And sometimes that can take a while to work out. It's not immediate, okay? One of the biggest losses that you see on day to day is nature. So I'm gonna assume that if you are doing this work, you care about nature, right? You love being outdoors and you're literally watching it go up in smoke. And as these fires get bigger and bigger and more devastating, it's harder to be like, oh no, this is how the forest recovers because it's not true anymore. This is like complete devastation. And you're seeing it on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? You're also encountering structures, likely, right? There's a really good chance that you've seen some structures. Worst case scenario, you're seeing whole towns or lives, okay? Even if this is not someone you know and it's not your house, you're still watching someone's house burn down. There is grief to that. And the thing is, as human beings, we kind of absorb the grief of others. So if you're kind of doing mop up and you're watching people come back to their houses and grieve, I want you to just think just like smoke, right? Your clothes smell like smoke when you get home, that grief absorbs into your experience. Um, there's also potentially some grief around just the politics of fire right now. So this could be on a small scale, right? Maybe you're really frustrated by the management of a particular situation. This could also be your feelings around global warming or forest management, right? When we go back to this idea of feeling really frustrated, I want you to acknowledge that maybe underneath is just some sadness, okay? Because that, that's a human reaction. That makes sense. As you watch these fires destroy a forest you love, knowing that it potentially could have been prevented with better decision-making, oh, that's sad and heavy, okay? And then finally, what I want you to consider is personal grief. So if you go back to your map, any moments that you missed, right, your baby's first words, that really great wedding, things that you wanted to be a part of, missing out is sad. The loss, the hit, is, is missing this moment. One of the hardest parts of Wildland is you miss a lot of moments. It's just really hard, okay? So let's acknowledge the sadness under that. Okay, I'm gonna run through the other two fa a little bit faster, just because I, I think this has probably given you the basis of how we do it. We acknowledge some of the underlying words. Literally, what you can do if you're really struggling with this is go to, th th go to thesaurus.com, put in the word sad, and look at the other words and just figure out what fits better. Sometimes we need more words in order to understand our individual experience. Okay, so I also want you to hit fear, right? We talked about the sphincter moments. Underneath the fear, did you feel vulnerable, right? Maybe this is vulnerable in terms of like, that fire is big and you are not that fast, right? So there was an actual vulnerability in the, the safety of the situation. Maybe you felt, maybe this came from the grief, so sometimes grief makes us feel very vulnerable. It, it feels like our shell has cracked. We feel sad and that's a scary feeling. Um, I want you to go back under fear. I want you to look at helpless again. Okay, so fear and helplessness again, those can go together. And then I want you to think about small. Sometimes we feel small and this could be in terms of, right, mother nature, literally wall of 100 foot fire. That makes you feel small, but also in like the systems and the politics, sometimes it just feels like we can't actually get anything done, okay? And then finally, let's talk about happy, okay? So I'm not here just to depress you, right? There's, there's parts of this job that you, I'm assuming you love, right? Most people that I talk to, the work is wearing them down, but they absolutely love it. And that's part of what messes with them is they don't want to quit, but they don't want to live like this, okay? So acknowledge the good spots. Acknowledge the moments where you felt content. If you've ever heard this sense of flow, right? This is when you're like doing the work you're meant to be doing. You're just in the zone. So you may, whatever your role is, you may feel this sense of well-being, contentedness, right? You're probably active. You're out in the forest. You have a mission. You have camaraderie with the people around you. That is legit. And I want you to mark down specific moments that you felt that in your season. 
I want to also make sure we hit this idea. I just kind of said it for a second, but this idea of connected and camaraderie. So one thing I hear over and over is that part of what's hard about going home is it's it's pretty much impossible to replace that sense of battle camaraderie that you feel in a home setting. It just It's just different. It doesn't mean you love your spouse any less. It's just different. Okay. So we want to acknowledge how important and how valuable that sense of connectedness, camaraderie, teamwork is, and maybe point out moments where you really felt it. This may have been actually in the action. This may have been gathering for beers after. Whatever it is, make sure that you honor that part of the season as well. Okay. Okay. And then finally, I want to give you this word dialectics, which means two things being true at once. So as you look at your season, I will put money on the fact that you've encountered this thing several times. If nothing else, there's the idea that as the season is over, you're relieved and excited to go home, and you kind of don't want to go home, okay? Not because you hate your family, but because sometimes chainsaws are more fun than diapers, okay? You love your family, and you'd rather stick with chainsaws. Both things are true, and it's the tension between those that can make us feel like funky sometimes. We just feel off because two things are true, and we don't know what to do about that. So again, look through your season and your map and, and look at those places where two things are true and it's just bringing up a little ick. We can't fix it, but we can't acknowledge it and that makes it a little bit better, okay? Take some time. If this is not something you've ever done, you may struggle to do this and that's totally okay. What I don't want you to do is then ignore it. I want you to take time and really engage with it, okay? You may need to call members of your crew and be like, hey, what happened in July? I can't remember, right? That's okay. Sometimes we can't remember all the details. Talk to your crew, give it some time, but don't ignore it and move on until you feel like you've really taken a good look. Okay, now to the part you are likely waiting for, right? I'm going to assume if you're wildland, you're here for the action, you don't want to talk about feelings, you want to get to fixing it. Fair enough. I totally get that. I make you talk about feelings because we can't fix it until we acknowledge it, but now we'll talk about how we fix it. And here's, here's how I want you to think about your plan. Here's what I want you to think about it. Throughout your season, you're at a 10, right? You are way up here. There is a lot of activity. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of danger. So your central nervous system is high. Then you go home, right? Season's over. You go home, and there's this expectation that you're going to be fine, that you're just going to take it down like this. But that's not how it works. So instead, I want you to think about this process we're going to build as how do we land the plane gradually, right? We don't want it to go straight down to the ground. That's how we die. Instead, we take it down gradually. And what we're taking down gradually is, is literally just your central nervous system, your brain's activation. Okay, you're highly activated. We've got to pull you down into kind of post-season, like how do we operate at a normal level for a while. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at with this is just a timeline. I'm going to, I'm going to talk in terms of a 30-day timeline. This is why we mapped your season first. As you look at it, you may need longer or you may need shorter. I'm just going to use 30 days as a general timeline. It's not a magic number. Okay, I'm not going to say in 30 days you'll be totally fine. But I do want you to have this idea of it being a process. This is not going to happen overnight. And I need to kind of consider how I map this up. So then within this 30-day timeline, I'm going to give you a couple different categories. The thing is, I can't tell you exactly what to do with this. You're an individual. You need to decide. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you kind of categories that you can use to make your own plan. Okay? And the first category is just our basic needs. So I'm going to assume, depending on, again, your, your assignments, what, what specific things you've been doing, your body may not be very well hydrated and you may not have a lot of proper nutrition. Okay, which means that as you come off the season, you're, the thing you probably want most is beer and burgers, which is fine. I have no issue with that, but I do want you to think about part of this descent is kind of getting your body back in working order. This may include some vegetables, right, some quality protein. This may include making sure you're drinking enough water, getting everything you need, um, especially if you live alone. I think it's super hard when you're exhausted and you've been through a tough season. It's super hard to think about cooking and food prep. It's much easier to go to Taco Bell every day, which is fair. I'm not going to say you need to do massive food prep, but just try to balance it out, right? Taco Bell today, tomorrow rotisserie chicken and a bag of Caesar salad, Taco Bell the next day. Try to give your body a little bit more of what it needs. The reality is nothing I give you in a plan for your mental health is going to work if we're not also taking care of your physical health. Our minds and our bodies are connected. We've got to do both. Okay. Likewise, we're going to need to figure out your sleep patterns. 
So it is very likely as, as you come off the season that you're not just going to sleep like a baby. If that happens, it's totally okay. There's a good chance you were sleeping well on the line because you were so exhausted. Now you come home, you do not have that same level of exhaustion. You do have the same level of stress hormones, and so it's hard to get to sleep. Okay, totally fine. But as we think about how we bring the plane down, what I want to make sure you do is you start to taper yourself. So if you can't sleep, so you stay up till 2 or 3 in the morning playing video games or on Netflix, okay, but we don't want to keep doing that. So when I talk about tapering, the behavior you have in this first part of the experience is not the behavior you want to keep doing for three, four, five weeks, okay? If you're staying up till two playing video games, I want you to see that as a short-term coping, and I want you to start thinking about longer term, how do we kind of get your bedtime routine a little bit steadier? Because without sleep, we're just a mess, okay? So you have to sleep. The bedtime routines you may start to integrate is just pulling yourself down 30 minutes a night. So if you went to bed at 2 last night, tonight we're going to aim for 1.30. Tomorrow we're going to aim for 1. It may mean that we minimize that time in front of a screen right before bed. Maybe we do some breathing or some stretching, right? This is the stuff that you may not want to do because it's kind of weenie, but your body needs it. It's, it's recommended because it works. We've got to teach our bodies to come back down and get some rest. Next, I want to talk about exercise and sensory, and I'm going to wrap these together. So again, totally dependent on your role, but there's a good chance you've had really high levels of exercise throughout the season. And likewise, you've had really high levels of sensory input. So when I talk about kind of balancing out our systems and how we're doing, we as human beings require different levels of just sensory input. Some of us are super high. Some of us really like loud environments. We like high impact sports. We feel good at the end of that. Some of us are really low. So I'm a really low sensory person. I don't do well with bright lights. I don't do well with a lot of noise. If I get out of a loud concert or something, I'm really tired. So that sensory input really wears me down. But for some of you, it may really um, ramp you up, okay? Fire is loud. Right? So not only is the actual fire loud, but chainsaws, bulldozers, helicopters, lots of other people, you have likely been in a very loud scenario for months and months and months. If you go home and your life is very quiet, that's going to jolt your system a little bit. So what I need you to do is I need you to balance it. Same thing with exercise. If you've been operating at high levels of exercise, I totally get that your body needs rest. But I also want you to think... So wildland fire is pouring stress hormones into your body, right? That's just what happens when we look at the experience. Exercise has been pouring helpful hormones in to help balance that out. If we go cold turkey on exercise, we lose that, but we still have the stress hormones. Okay, so we've got to be putting some of those, those endorphins and things we get from exercise back in. And there's a good chance what you may want to do is kind of combine the two. Get some, some high sensory inputs and some like high impact exercise in. It doesn't have to be all day. You don't have to take a chainsaw out and chop down four trees after a 10 mile hike. That's not what I'm talking about. But I do want you to think in this idea of dosing. You need to give yourself a dose of sensory impact and a dose of exercise. This could be, I mean, it, it sounds okay. It could be going out and doing some fuel reduction in your own yard, right? Get some chainsaw noise inputs. But this could also be something like playing basketball with your friends, going to the batting cages going for a jog with loud music included. I know that a, a lot of wildland firefighters are really drawn to video games after the season. I think a lot of that is it's giving you this sensory input, right? They're loud, especially if you've got your headphones on and you're just absorbing some of the loudness, which is helpful and effective. We just don't want that to be your only thing. Okay? I don't want you to shrivel up in a cave. Okay. So let's get some dosing of sensory and um, exercise. Again, you can taper this down keeping in mind that whatever your sensory needs are, this is a regular human need that we have. So if you'd like loud, get loud on an ongoing basis. We need exercise on an ongoing basis. So we're going to taper this down, but not to zero. Okay. Okay. So next let's talk about your social interactions. So I routinely hear that it's really hard to come from wildland life into regular life. That's just kind of a jolting transition. This is the same for like military, prison, any high intensity environment that also has a lot of kind of structure and a certain way of dealing with the world, then transitioning into like regular grocery shopping life. That's a, that's a tough transition to make. So we want to start by acknowledging that it's hard. And then as we think about coming down, we want to put a couple of 
controls and tools in place to help you with that transition, okay? First, um, we want to kind of make a plan if you have a family, right, if you have kids. So first of all, it's important to acknowledge that the season has been hard and you need to come down, but we also need to acknowledge that your spouse has been solo parenting and that in and of itself is a battle, okay? So we need to take care of your needs while also being very aware of their needs and the fact that your kids miss you and they want to be around you. The, the way we handle this is, one, there's no perfect thing that we can do, right? But if you are feeling very overstimulated, like you have a couple hours with the kids and you are just like losing your mind, that's real. That's normal. It's okay. It doesn't mean you're an asshole parent. It just means that you are transitioning environments and it's really hard. What I want you to make sure you do is you get that exercise and that sensory input and that you work on your sleep. Because I can't say like, you know, get rid of your kids for the next month. That's not going to work. Instead, what we want to do is we want to counterbalance the stress of that stimulation with some of, some of those more normal things that you've been doing because that will help your system calm down. Okay. Secondly, I want you to make sure that you carve out time to connect with your partner. Okay. It gets really easy to just get back into regular life and be doing the diapers and the school drop-offs and, you know, soccer practice, whatever the heck is going on, and never actually take a moment to sit down and talk to each other. I can guarantee that your marriage will begin to crumble if you do not make time to talk to each other. So carve out some time to go out to dinner, to go on a walk, to be together face-to-face. You may not quite be able to have a full conversation about your season in this first week, right? You may be a little bit, still a little bit kind of off and struggling to make sense of it and share. But by the end of the second week and definitely by the end of the 30 days, if you have not made time to talk to each other about what the season has been like, I promise you it'll have a major impact on your relationship, okay? Reconnecting, speaking to each other face-to-face without distraction is absolutely essential, so with that being said, we, we also need to take a look at your wider social interactions, okay? If you're coming off the line and you're, you're up here, you're super escalated, grandma's 95th birthday party may be a really hard environment for you. So when you look at this first week where you come down, if there's some big family social stuff going on, that may not be the right place for you to be. Maybe you make, you make an appearance and then you, you know, claim you've got stomach problems and you get out. I don't care what you do. But what I do want to acknowledge is as we plan for your plane to come down, big family social events may actually be detrimental to calming your central nervous system, and it's okay if you don't do those right away. doesn't mean we want to avoid them later, but we, ab- we avoid them in the beginning so that we can actually engage in them later, okay? Um, if you are social and you need to see your friends and stuff like that, same thing. I want you to carve out time to do it. Part of this is just acknowledging what you need and making sure that you prioritize those different things that are going to settle your system back down. And then the final part of social interaction is don't lose connection with your crew. That battle camaraderie that I've talked about is really, really important. It is going to give you some of those hits of good hormones as well when you feel connected to other people. It's okay to stay in touch with them. It's also okay to acknowledge that there will be some tension and weirdness if you feel super connected to them and not to your family. It's okay. We can work it out. We just don't want to avoid either side, okay? We want to balance both of them. And if staying in touch with your crew is an important part of that, do it. And then finally, I want you to make sure that you access any resources or help that you need. If you're struggling, please don't just struggle silently, okay? So I, no matter where you are, I can do kind of resilience and stress coaching with you. We can work that out. If you and your spouse are really having a tough time, go see a therapist. Go see someone. Don't just shove it down and keep pushing forward because it's not going to get better if you ignore it. That's kind of the way it works. We don't just ignore things and they go away. We ignore things and they fester and they explode later. Okay? So get the get the help and the resources you need. It's part of why I'm doing these online trainings so that you have some direction and access. Um, I really, really, truly appreciate the work that you do. I know it can be really hard on you and your family, so I appreciate that sacrifice. And please take the time to take good care of yourself. That's it. I'm Shannon from Stack of Stones. Adios.